Hey everybody, check it out. You gotta give this one a listen. We just finished up the wrap of a great Festool Shop Talk with Matt from MWA Woodworks. You can find him on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Go check out his videos. They're so informative. They're great build videos. And what I want to mention is this is why you should listen. He gives some extremely sound advice to people starting a woodworking business. So check it out. I had a heck of a time chatting with him. And thank you for listening. Welcome to episode number 23 of Festival Shop Talk. We're with Matt from MWA Woodworks. You can find him on MW Woodworks on Instagram. On He's got a YouTube channel, MWA Woodworks. He's got a heck of a following on both. And, of course, MWAWoodworks.com. What other platforms might you be on, Matt? Oh, my gosh. Well, I've got, uh, uh, let's see, TikTok, I think, is the other major one that you can find me on. Facebook, I'm everywhere just at MWA Woodworks. I got it all locked down. Way cool. Way cool. Yeah, it's always good when you start an account to lock everything down quickly yeah. all at once before you start putting content out, for sure. Hey, I just want to say, uh, man, I, I, when did, I met you about three or four years ago at Rubio Monaco. Bill yeah, Bob. 20, gosh, 2018 now, down at the Rubio event, the first Rubio event. Man, that was forever ago. Oh, you were at the first one. Oh, my God. That was, oh, yeah. boy, has that evolved over time? Because when I showed up there setting it up, I think we had two bar clamps. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I think we had a Swanson square for all our measuring and layout. Oh, my God. But you know what? What was cool about that is you guys made that work. And I was so Hey, we got it done. And there was some tremendous folks there, some tremendous makers. Um, most of them I had not met in person uh, cause back then there was, well, not really, you know, no workbench con, nothing like that. So yeah, that was, yeah. that was really the first time that I met most of those folks and man, what a great time. Hey, uh, was, uh, uh, Jason Hibbs there, Bourbon Ma? Jason was there. Philip Morley was there. <laughs> Welcome to Hogwarts. Steve-O, Stevie, built by Stevie. You know, she's another local, local Tennessean. She was yep. there. Uh, yeah, uh, lots of lots of great people. Yeah, Jeff Mack from Jeff Mack Design was there. Hey, Sun to Sawdust, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what was cool about that is um, I've on Shop Talk we did uh, Jason. If everybody doesn't know who he is, it's Bourbon Moth. Uh, and I just love chatting with him because that's the first time I met him down there, and he knew what he told me. That's the first time he had actually gone out and met a lot of people because he was just doing his thing where he was in Oregon. And I was blown away. He goes, yeah, it's the first time I had been invited to something, I think he said. And I'm just like, wow, it was really cool. And then we did a, another shop talk out uh, at his shop in Oregon when we were out there. Uh, I think in July we were out there. It's pretty cool. What a, what a great, down-to-earth, authentic guy. Oh man, so, so fun! Just so fun, so uh, so nuts, and um, just you know, he's he's li living it, man, living the dream. Yeah, um, and what's really cool? So I'll let you know this. I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag yet because I had been talking about this. Alan Neary, who is the man behind the scenes and in front of everybody at Rubio Monaco, because it was his idea. He got me involved with it. We kind of designed the whole build-off thing. He's coming up here, I believe, in February, because guess what we're doing? He's always wanted me to do this, and I finally got the right things going on this. We're going to do a build-off here at Festool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really awesome. We're working with a few things where Rubio's going to come in. We're going to do it in conjunction with something else here. And we are so stoked because uh, next week I start going out and getting all the resources for it. And it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. I'll tell you what, we're, gonna, we're not going to have any bottlenecks on tools, I can tell you. 
Yeah. Yeah, I see the wall. I see the wall behind you there. You get you guys oh, are well yeah. stocked. Yeah, and the other thing that's <laughs> cool is we're opening up the um we have this move a uh, foldable wall and we're going to have both teams in this huge space and it's it's going to be great. We're going to have so much daggone fun. Alan's going to come up. He's going to bring his crew with him. And I'm going to invite some other, a few other people, too, so it'll be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, boy, we just went off on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I love this. I love shots. Big news, like, you know? I get to hang out with friends, you know? And uh, it's kind of like when I do Festool Live, we always say, hey. Everybody goes, hey, you're nervous? I go, what should I be nervous about? I'm, I'm just, it's, just, I'm just, it's just people, right? It's just people. I'm just hanging out and having fun, right? Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun. I need to know, or I think everybody would like to know, Matt, because this Festival Shop Talk is always about you, the person we have. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get started? How long have you been doing it? Kind of bring us up to speed. Yeah, uh, so I am a husband and father of three living uh, just south of Nashville in Tennessee. Uh, I have been doing the wood, the whole woodworking uh, thing for about a decade now. Um, when my wife and I moved our family uh, down to Tennessee, bought a house, uh, we really didn't have much to put in it at the time. And so um, my wife just starts sending me, hey, you should check out, you know, these project plans and look at look at this DIY thing. And all you need is, you know, a Craig jig and a, and a circular saw and you can do this. And I'm like, oh, geez, here we go. And at that time, <laughs> I was not I was the least handy person ever. Uh, and um, and so I really started doing a lot of research and a lot of uh, watching YouTube and I was like, oh, man, this this is amazing. Like, look at this stuff and look what these people are building and look, you know, it, you know, from a look at this tool and what does this do and all of that. And I fell so far down that rabbit hole. It's it's not even funny. And it's really just been no looking back from there. I, you know, started up, a, a you know, content creation light, I suppose, on Instagram way back in the day. Gosh, probably 2014 now. I've been doing it on Instagram uh, and then started a cutting board business. I ran that for about four years, shipping boards all over the place and loving it. And um, and that was great because I could do it, uh, you know, kind of at night and on the weekends, which is where I primarily do most of my of my woodworking. And so that was easy to manage, easy to get, you know, generate some income and get things going and and show people what was going on in my shop and have a lot of content based around that uh and then i eventually made the jump uh, over to youtube I, right before the pandemic uh decided that i wanted to to go from making more to teaching because i think that's more in my nature and more of the what i like to do is showing people the process and tips tricks how to get things done uh and so i kind of jumped into that and really got you know my feet wet or really jumped in the pool is more like it because uh, that's a whole other ball game it's not making one minute videos sped up for uh instagram it's a it's a whole other job and a whole other deal but i'm i'm loving it so far yeah for sure and man i i saw you i saw you you got about 164 165 thousand subscribers on youtube so it, it's amazing man. the support over there is just awesome and i i never thought you know a couple of years ago when i started that i'd be where i am because you know i don't put out videos like some of these folks do you know every two or three weeks i'm much slower than that uh, but I try to do the best that I can, and 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 the support and love is just amazing over there. It's a great platform to be on, and a and a great way to express what you have going on. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize you could do a great video, put it on YouTube, uh, but there's a lot of back end to that. And when I say back end, um, it's answering comments and uh, engaging with your uh, audience that you have, and I think that's important too because. There's some other really great questions that come about behind the scenes. So I, I on Instagram, I do the Festival Sedge thing, and I'm constantly getting content from people texting me about, hey, can you do a quick video on this? I went, oh, wow, what a great idea. I, sometimes you think, you know, you've been doing it for a decade, you know, and you think, hey, everybody knows this. 
know they do. No, that's uh, the number one. The number one thing, and 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 you'll get sometimes you'll you'll make a post, and you know someone will say, "Well, duh, of course, who doesn't know that?" And you know that you know that's so simple. You shouldn't do woodworking if you don't know that. And I'm like, hey, you should never, ever, ever make assumptions about what people know, what people have been exposed to. Um, just everybody starts somewhere, and you know, you don't know until you know, so you should always, you know, that's kind of the number one thing I go into it with is I don't, you know, when you're editing down a video and you're deciding, you know, I got to take this thing that's this big and make it this big. Yep. Don't, don't forget, don't forget to leave out the simple stuff. Don't forget to leave out the alternate ways to do something because those are the things I think that people really take away from the video right because that's when you're actually helping somebody is by well i don't have a bandsaw but i could use a jigsaw to do this or i don't have a domino but i could do this other thing right i mean right. so showing them alternate ways keeping it as simple you know little things that you just yeah. I absolutely don't don't assume that that people know because just because you think it's you know a simple thing yeah, what I was doing is I was going through uh, your Instagram account. I said, because I always do a little bit of research to have some more, uh, I guess, insightful questions. And I was like, so the first, and I wrote this down. I went, cabinets and cutting boards. Because I knew your business was cutting boards. But it seems like, and, and I'll tell you what, you can watch a hundred videos. And I don't want to say it's the same thing, but a hundred videos on like a Mita saw station how to build a base cabinet, right? How to do this. But it's your take on it and it's your flow or your process that I think is the takeaway on that. How do you feel about that? Because everybody has something to offer, right? Yeah, and, and it's something that you got to think about too when you're, because I've done multiple cabinet videos and, and tried to turn them into different things and show them in different ways. And yeah, you got to, each each kind of piece of content that you do, you got to think of a fresh angle, something different. Um, you know, maybe one one project is more towards the you know hardcore process, and another one is more towards create you know, a little bit more creative angle, a little bit more highlighting the tips and tricks instead of just focusing entirely on the process, and really starting to engage with your audience. and And you kind of mentioned it before, like. Once you get that feedback loop going through comments and suggestions and, hey, can you do a video on this? And, hey, uh, you didn't mention this in this video. Take a note. Take a note. Set it aside. Next time you do a video on that, make sure you include it and uh, just keep that going. Yeah, because it, it's absolutely it, – it can get really boring if you do the same video over and over and over again in the same style and the same flow. And so you've got to figure out how to really – uh, make it so that you're presenting basically the same content, but you're putting a, a, a way different angle on, on what it is that you're presenting. Yeah. Yeah. So just in chat with you, it sounds like I've been there before. The motivation was a house and marriage <laughs> and kids. And I saw this on back way back when I saw this at Ikea, I was walking around right or i saw this on pinterest or i saw this on etsy and i totally understand that motivation and but you're just cranking out there and you crank more stuff out is that is that what keeps you motivated what keeps you motivated is there something else out there uh i mean i think uh for me you know the the primary motivation is i i, I always strive to be the best at you know, whatever it is that I'm trying to do, I always try to, I'm, I'm a very, it, it, it can be a, it can be a flaw sometimes, but I'm, it, you know, if I go for something, I just steep in it, marinate in it, try to learn as much of the detail as I can. Uh, and then, and video editing and, 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 you know, uh, doing the social media thing is no different. Uh, and so for me, I think taking on the YouTube thing, it was, really hey how do i learn this is it's a whole other you know it's a whole other craft oh, right yeah. it's a whole other oh, craft yeah. a whole other job uh and so i think learning how to kind of take my journey and share it with other people is the primary motivation uh but you know the family is another motivation because i 
I people ask, well, you know, do you do you make furniture? Do you do you you know do custom stuff for customers or whatever? And I don't I don't have time for that. I have more things on my to do list just for for my wife and my kids and stuff around the house. I have content for years. Like I don't I don't I don't need to do any of that other stuff because it's just I I you know uh, until I'm a full timer. You know, and I and yeah. I don't have the day job anymore. I just there's no way I would never run out of stuff to do. <laughs> it's no, no, no. I was just having this conversation with somebody this morning because I had a cabinet shop in Fort Lauderdale. Everybody who listens to Shop Talk, I've probably said it a thousand times. And every everything I built lives in somebody else's house. So <laughs> when we when we bought this brand new house here in Indiana. I was able to build for my wife, Mary Ann. And we left our kids in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> and Smart move. I have endless builds on the weekends and evenings in my house. And I, I only, it's tough when you build for somebody. It, it really is because sometimes like uh, I used to hear, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm like, yeah, but you have to take your, um, your taste out of it because they're paying for it. But there is a, oh, another, yeah. there's a huge caveat to all of this. I get to see what I build every day now. <laughs> so I, get, <laughs> I get to For see better or for space. worse, right? For and better or for worse. Yeah, I think I get to see <laughs> And you, you never point them out. Okay, I digress. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, what's age your family? Um, growing up, who was your biggest influence to get you going or or woodworking? Who was your biggest influence? Did you have one? Well, and, and honestly, in in woodworking, really, it didn't even start until I was a you know until I was a grown man. But I you know I think uh, growing up, probably uh, my grandfather was was really handy. Um, you know, build a, a a good majority of the the home that he and my grandmother lived in. He was you know a machinist by trade and would always mm. uh, always have stuff going on in his garage. And you know he was metal work and wood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, and and so I think you know seeing that and 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 having the confidence to be able to do something like that. But honestly, it didn't take root until I was till I was a grown, grown man, you know, and I, mm. I just, I was, you know, in corporate life and I had no use for, you know, I can pay somebody to do that. I don't need to waste my time doing that. Um, but then it was really like the early YouTubers, you know, the, you know, the wood whisperer and, you know, woodworking for mere mortals and a lot of those early guys that really, um, that really just took the time to share. Yeah content that was completely free to me and, and good content, you know, good quality content, people that know what they're doing. Uh, and, and really they're, they're kind of my primary influence for, for even, even loving what I do now, uh, is, is that was the exposure. And I mean, had I been born a decade or two earlier, you know, what I may have completely missed the boat, you know, and not, not even, not even been exposed to any is cause I, I really have anybody like that necessarily, uh, uh, growing up. Cause my, my grandparents lived in, they live in Illinois. So, you know, I'm not, I'm nowhere near them. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, I think really the, the primary influence came from, from YouTube. And honestly, that's a, that's another motivating factor for being on YouTube is I feel like I owe what I have to that. And so it would be nice to give that back, right? And right. to share, pass along to whoever's behind me in line, in, uh, you know, in the knowledge line, you know, what, what I have to offer and what I can share to them uh, that, uh, that'll just keep the whole thing going. The beauty of YouTube. And I, I caught on to this early on uh, working here at Festool because I started Festool Six. But we were keeping, and, and what I really dig about it, what you've done on YouTube, it's going to live forever, correct? You've done it, and you will be teaching. You've done it once. You've posted the video. You will be teaching forever. 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 And I just think that is so important because people need 
they're gonna they're gonna link to you. They're gonna work with Mark. Uh, uh, link to Mark on the Wood Whisperer. They're gonna link to. I'll call them out. Jason Bent on uh, Bent's Woodworking. Or you know who they'll link to? They'll link to Alma on oh, uh, yeah. Studios, right? They'll link to her. And I mean, who wouldn't link to, link to Alma? Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, I think she's actually watching right now. We called her out when we started. Um, and they'll, they'll link to Stevie uh, because they, that inspires, but they're also teaching. And I just think that is so important because you want to uh, cr uh, prolong the craft. You want to keep the craft going. You want to share your craftsmanship, but also teach the craftsmanship. So yeah, I get, and you get I, to do I, it I get in your own way. way. Right, you get your own. You get to do it your own, your own way, your own style. It's completely wide open. You're not, you're not making a television show where you're under somebody's thumb and there's a script and there's all this. You know, it's just, you, you know, and that might scare some people. But at the end of the day, you can make of it what you want, and you can teach in your own way. You can you, in your own style. All of that stuff is just, it's a completely blank canvas. Yeah, and. Uh... I'll take it one more step. Last night I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. He's here from Germany, uh, Christian. And we were talking about the first video I did at Festool in 2007. And he goes, I still have it. It's horrible. And I go, do you remember that? I said, do you remember that Saturday morning? Uh, we were in there together in the old training room with Martin and you. And you guys gave me a script. Martin wanted, was constantly stopping me and asking me to say it this way. I can't do it that way. And that is why I think we've been successful with Festool Live, with the Festool Sedge on Instagram, and now with this, because we do this live first. It's because it's authentic, I think. It's, uh, um, and, and someone says, why do you like doing live stuff? And I go, you ever watch Saturday Night Live? And I go, yeah. Do you really watch it? No, you watch it because you want to see them start to laugh a little, right? Mm -hmm. You want to see, you want to see it happen mistake. live. You want to see it happen live. Just like NASCAR. Do you go there for the, uh, for the loop around? No, you're looking for the racks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always joke around about it, but that, I, you see, I, that's, it, you find your platform. YouTube is awesome because that's a killer platform. And I really like what you said, Matt. Authentic. Right? You can do it your way. You're unscripted and you take care of it. But I, I'm going to say it again. A lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes after the video is posted or getting the video posted to YouTube. It's oh, all yeah. work on that editing, huh? Yeah. Oh, building the, building your project. I mean, you know, you think about building a cabinet. Well, that's a simple process. Well, it's not a simple process when you've got to change the camera angle 50 times in the middle of it and... Uh, and you also have to have the story and the script in your head of what it is that you're trying to show, and you end up doing weird things that you would never do if you were just building a cabinet. Uh, and and that's a that yeah, it's absolutely it slows everything down, but it but it also uh, it forces you to think again. Going back to the teaching thing, it forces you to think it through. It forces you to think about what's most important here. What is the what really is the shot that counts? What really is the is the um, the point that you're trying to get home in that particular moment? Uh, and you just think about it. But but it comes at a cost, right? The cost is everything oh, slows yeah. down, everything takes longer. Um, you know, you 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 got a lot of content creators and YouTubers out there who they do this. They sit down and they talk to the camera, and that's their content, right? And when you think about our the world that we live in, it's two parts. You've got the, the creation of the thing, and then you've got the creation of the content that goes along with the thing that is really, that's the, that, that's the product. I don't, I, I don't consider myself a woodworker. I consider myself a content creator whose subject is woodworking. It's the, it's the, the, you know, it's the backdrop, it's the thing, but it's not, it's not what I do for a living. So, uh, I'm forced to think at it, th think about it, look at it in a different way than yeah. somebody who just works in a cabinet shop and bangs things out all day long, right? They're, yeah. The way they think, their processes, their workflows, all different, all different. So 
Yeah, and they, then they go out and they comment. They happen to be home at night. They comment, and that's not the way I do it. I go, well, that's I, – I don't – I see sometimes I see comments, and I'm just like, but you don't understand what that person's actually doing. Because that person who is in that shop all day, they could be the – I've seen this a hundred times in my life. That person could be the best trim carpenter you've ever seen, the work they do, or cabinet builder, or furniture builder. They don't know how to take it out of here and bring it out here. And the next one is to take it out of here, bring it out of here, but then shoot the right video and get the right process. That is so daggone tough. The best craft. It's the real learning. Teach. It's the real learning for me. Yep. And uh, uh, thank you for doing all you do because I've watched a few of your videos and they're freaking awesome. Well, up, I, I thank you for sitting through more than five minutes of my videos. That was... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> so, we have a running joke here. They go, said did you watch the video? And I go, I don't, I don't watch any of the videos. Uh, I do the, I do the festival sedges on my phone and post them. And I take care of all that account myself. Um, whoopsie, dropped my ear pods. Hopefully my AirPods are still working. Uh, and I take care of all that myself. But other than that, Chris and Derek take care of everything here at Festool. And now we have a new uh, uh, lady here, Lucy, who will be doing a lot of our content. Oh, welcome to the team, Lucy. Yeah. Hey, I called her out. Tell her I called her out on Shop Talk. Yeah, she's, uh, she's wicked cool. And she'll be working with us. She's our new social media uh, person. Okay, so here's a quick question for you. I think I know this question. Uh, we've we've kind of hammered it, but uh, one, you said four years of selling cutting boards. You still sell, selling the cutting boards? Nope, I gave it up when I started YouTube. I said I, I can't I can't be I can't be in both places. I can't yeah. spend my time making orders for people and then continue to pump out content that takes much much longer to produce. There's just no way. So I gave that I gave that up when I decided to go full time into uh, into YouTube. But I did just put out a, a, a YouTube video uh, just this weekend about you know setting up a cutting board business and and operating it and making it as efficient as possible and maximizing your profit and all that. Um, so I again the the teaching is still in me to to get it out and get the content on YouTube. But I don't. But I just decided I couldn't do it anymore. I had to do one or the other, and so I ended up picking content creation over production. Hey, uh, and when you did that, were you selling through Etsy or? Oh, that's where I started. I started selling through Etsy, uh, and then um, and I and I kind of talk about this in the video. Uh, it Etsy is Etsy is a, a blessing and a curse. It's really really easy to get started. It's you know, you can set up a shop if, as long as you've got all your media and nice pictures and all that stuff. Uh, you can be up and running on Etsy in a day and taking customer orders. Um, but uh, I liken Etsy to, you know, the, it, it's the online craft fair, the online version of a craft fair. Yep. So you're, oh, you're yeah. in there, you're, you're in your little, your little area with, you know, 500,000 other people who also do that. And, um, and there's, you know, you know, lots of crowded, you know, it, it's just very crowded. People's products are on your own pages. When you go to buy something off Etsy, if you look, it's got your competition's work right there. So I kind of teach, you know, hey, you got to get yourself off that platform and, and get yourself, you know, get your own website, do Shopify, your own dot com, whatever. Uh, that you can control your branding, you can control what people see and what they can't see, uh, and then and then really go on to teach like the way that you drive and you generate your own traffic is 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 sharing. It's sharing on social media. Uh, it's really uh, getting people involved in your content, uh, attracted to your brand, invested in your brand sharing who you are, uh, sharing the behind the scenes, all that stuff. That's how you really drive demand for your brand. Uh, and that's how you really get people invested in it. And, um, and instead of being on Etsy where it's almost like 
a race to the bottom. It's like it's you know like trying to compete with someone who's just trying to sell it for a you know less and less and less and less and grab those orders. You can go the complete opposite direction, and you'll have people asking for your product, not because what you build is any better quality than what a ten thousand other people can do. But they want to buy your board because they're invested in in your yeah. brand and your journey and what you're doing, uh, and and that's how you get multiple. You know, if you're selling cutting boards or any other handmade thing, that's how you get people coming back to buy more and more and more because they 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 are attracted by the light of what you're doing. Then you deliver the product in a quality way, you know, and they and they get it and they say, oh, yeah, this is as good as I expected it to be. And and you're done. Like from now on, you know, if they need something for this person or this person or an office party or my great aunt, and I can't think of what else to get her. Uh, they're they're coming, coming back, back because they they're know they want to they want to invest in what you're doing and they know that you can deliver on the product and that you don't need Etsy after that. You know, oh you God. don't need Etsy. That is some unbelievable advice, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, at the end of these uh, shop talks, I always do a, um, a front, an intro uh, for like Spotify and Apple and stuff like that, and actually YouTube. And I can't wait because I can't wait to just say you have to listen to this episode because of the advice you're giving. It's awesome. Yep. It's awesome. Okay. Oh. This is even funnier. Uh, we've been talking and everything, but I didn't ask. Uh, you get any festival? Do I have any festival? No, <laughs> man. I don't. I don't need that green stuff. Are you kidding me? That's <laughs> who can afford that stuff? That no way, man. I, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm kidding. I've. I've been. Uh, I've been da drinking the green Kool Aid now since 2015. Okay, so really quick, how'd you? Okay, do you remember your uh, – this is to Pat question. How did you find out about it, and why did you buy it? What was your first tool? Uh, well, found out about it just through social, people using it on social media, and, uh, and I think that the first, the first thing I bought was the Domino, and honestly, I bought it because it's, there's nothing else like it, you know? It, my i think my i think my favorite and most used thing is is my ts55 i mean at any time there's a any sheet goods being cut in my shop it it's it's on every project but the domino is just you if you've never seen it or never used it before you're like holy cow that thing is so awesome and i've got to have one and so that was the first thing i bought uh and it's you know it's it's one of the it's just one of those tools. It's like it just puts it on easy mode for you, you know. And and uh -oh. and point and shoot mortise and tenon. It's just amazing. Love love that thing. But the but the track saw wins in terms of my, I think my most used and the thing that I turned to the most. I think my track saw wins. So I take it that if we could get rid of everything fest tool, the one tool you would keep would be the track saw. Yeah, I think so. Me too. Yep. Me too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, I get a presentation on Friday, Festool Live, but it's from Heartful Hardware. And I go there every single year. And I just love it. The people. Isn't that so place cool. awesome? It's like the oh. Mecca. My, my brother in law is like five minutes away from that place. Oh, and every time I'm up there visiting my wife's family, Heart, we got to have a trip to Hartville, man. It, that's it's like it's like a a Woodcraft and a Home Depot had this most amazing, beautiful baby, and it's just uh, there's I I've never been to any other place like it. It's awesome. And what's unbelievable is Mark and his crew just redid the entire retail uh, area, power tool area, and I there's a few displays around the North America that are so impressive. In fact, that's where I do all the festival lives. Hartville, we did Atlas Tool in Toronto. And, but I'm going to tell you, I am really stoked to do it because, and the reason I'm saying this is 
Mark and I were on the phone and he says, hey, what are we going to do Festool Live about this year? And I said, why Festool? <laughs> and it's funny you said this because I am packing up right now my dominoes and my track song. And that is what I think brings a lot of people into our system. And I'm going to talk about a lot of different things. Uh, I'm really stoked about it because I used to teach this every single day of my life here at Festool over the years, for 15 years. And I'm really stoked because that's one of the things that I, you know, why should I invest in this system? And then when you show somebody and then you're talking about breaking down sheet codes, I don't know any other more accurate way unless you spend 40K on a big sliding saw. And mm -hmm. uh, it, I'm preaching to the choir. Not my shop. Not my <laughs> shop. And no. I, I, think, I think just the uh, – uh, I was talking to Jason Benz about this because uh, I think he's, he's currently being – He's having he's having all the the full download dumped into his skull, and he's like, I, I just oh, yeah. learned like every little tool. There's like ten things I didn't know about it, and that's what I think um, uh, is so impressive about the ecosystem in general is just what what has been thought of, how it how it makes the work easier, how it plays together with everything else, right? Because I've got, you know, Festool sanders and, 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 you know, routers and other things as well, um, mainly because they work so well together, you know, and they, you know, you throw it with an MFT and you got a, uh, you know, guide rails and all this other stuff. I mean, it just, it works. It works well. And, and I'm a, I'm probably not even the, you know, the primary customer because I, I do everything in a shop. I don't go to the job site. So I don't experience the full, full benefit of that ecosystem. Um, but it just changes your workflow and, and, and makes it as efficient as it can, can be. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, if it weren't for all those pesky sustainers that I just have sitting around now with nothing, nothing to, you know what I do with those? Here's, I have a literally a cabinet that is just empty sustainers. Wow! Because I keep ev I keep everything out for the most part so that I can yeah. you know grab it when I need it. Um, but my favorite thing to do with sustainers is hang cabinets. <laughs> oh, you put the cabinets on them. Yeah. So I do. I'm a weirdo. I I I, I like install my base cabinets first, and then I'll set. Like I, I I can't remember the exact combination of of sustainer, but you stack a couple of them on top of one another, and it's the perfect height uh, off of your base them. cabinets to install uh, your uppers, and that I I just love that. By the way, you're not you're not a weirdo because that's how I install kitchens in Fort Lauderdale. I yeah. always did bases first, that because it gives me my baseline. And I am trying to remember with the old classic sustainers because they're what I used to stack them as well. And it yeah. just made so much sense. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Hey, okay. So, uh, hey, Big D, um, check out the time. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I can't believe this. I, I could go on forever, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. This is kind of a, a question. Um, I, no, a, I kind of know the answer. Because when I look in your shop, I see the machinery, I see the festival, but I also see hand tools. I'm a hand tool fanatic, okay? I think somebody calls me a hand tool weenie here, but it doesn't matter because I just love hand tools. And I always said festool and really good hand tools are a perfect myth. How do you incorporate or where do you use hand tools in your shop? Uh so primarily it would be finish work and finesse, right? So if I'm cutting joinery or if I'm putting an edge on something, uh, I will pull out a block plane or a chisel and take care of the little detail work. I've, I've, never, uh, I've never built anything prime, you know, with, exclusively with hand tools. I just don't, I don't work that yeah. way, nor do I have the time to work that way. Yeah. But I will pull out, a, you know, a good sharp block plane uh, is uh, way preferred over, you know, say putting a chamfer on the edge of a board with a router uh, and, a, and, a, and a bit that may not be quite as sharp as it needs to be. And then you end up tearing a chunk out of your work, mm -hmm. you get a nice sharp hand plane, uh, block plane, you're going to be good to go. So I do little detailed things like that with my hand tools, but I don't, I don't get into anything more crazy than that. 
Yeah, my, with me nowadays, with me, it's just my final fit and finish with a plane or a scraper, yep. you know. Yep. And uh, I'll do some handsaw work for if I'm doing because I, I I don't like the look of machine dovetails. I like a hand cut dovetail if I do. You know, I, I'm kind of sold on this domino drawer box that I make all the time, especially if it's a shop furniture, right? Cool. Okay. I'm looking. I think we're right where we need to be. Hey, Matt, is there any question I should have asked you? Uh, I, you know what? I, I think you bled me dry. And uh, <laughs> you are, you're so good at this. You made this process so easy. And uh, honestly, I, it, it was such a pleasure talking to the great and powerful Oz. I mean, the great and powerful oh, Sedge. Wow. And uh, we, we can't let it be so long before we talk to one another again. I got I to gotta get up there and see you because you're not that far away from me. No. Hey, the invite is always there, Matt. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. I can almost guarantee it. <laughs> we, got some, we got some amazing things happening um, all of next year uh it's probably going to be our number one product launching year but we're also going to be doing a lot of stuff with people out there who are really involved with social media so stay tuned i think there might be an email out there soon ah thank you i appreciate that sedge hey listen i want to thank you so much uh once again go check out mwa woodworks he's matt is everywhere on the internet and please go watch all his videos and bump up his average view duration because I do. I love to watch the video. <laughs> All right. So, hey, Matt, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we'll be talking soon. All righty. Be good, Sedge. You too, brother. Thanks. All right.